this is the way I think in terms of trading. Like I want a short week and, and buy strength. Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm willing to give up the, that basically the three dollars, like two dollars and fifty cents, up to seventy six, because then that's more strength to me. Right. So those those are big rules that I I created for myself, like making sure that I don't add up, I don't add size until or add to my position until I know I can change my stop. And then I look at a 15, even worse. I'm like, like what? Like what happened? And that's that's where I would want to get involved. Like this is how I this is how I'm thinking of it. By the way, if you're looking for the best tools for day trading, everything will be linked down in the description. And also, this is not financial advice. This is our personal opinion. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Um, since I'm back, I guess from vacation and back now, really really back in the routine like after a couple of weeks i felt so off track with like working out um stretching eating well and doing all of these things and it's frustrating because i just can't seem to um to just get back into it like i know what i'm doing wrong but i can't do the change or just can't like follow my routine and it's kind of, it's starting to bleed in my trading of like um days that i'm undisciplined I just not, I'm, I'm just not sharp. Like, I guess yeah, you would probably have more reason not to be sharp with a kid, you know, and less sleep, but I'm just, I'm just not sharp. I'm just so off track with everything. And I don't know if it's because I try to do maybe too much change at the same time. Like, yeah, I, I mean, um, I, I don't want to interrupt, but yeah, I mean, I know that that's always a big thing. Um, you know, every time I try to make a lot of changes at the same time, it always it, it always you always go through a, a longer rough patch than anticipated or than you want um you know just you know monitors you're, you're trying to re-get adjust readjusted to where everything is you know and you know like you said like you you're trying to do something new but you're also trying to take advantage of, of the types of trades that you, that you know that you can take advantage of um you know, you have to be willing to basically give up like a whole month of gains, um, you know, to, to try to focus on that, on the news thing. And then, you know, and really get it down because you're trying to, you're essentially trying to be a jack of all trades and you're going to end up being a master of none, you know, instead of like a master of one trade, you know, like that whole Bruce Lee quote that everyone, you know, posts on Twitter, you know, whatever it took like a, a thousand karate chops or whatever, whatever one time, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, right. I've seen people take or people post, but you know, that's essentially, you know, that's, that's essentially it. You, you know, just, you, you know, just be willing to spend like the three weeks just watching new watching news and just, you know, knowing that, 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 or, or that, or, you know, you have to just always trade news smaller. Like, all right, it's a, it's a focus. Like you said, and it's not going to be my main focus, but I want to be aware if and when there's news, I want to be able to trade it, you know, especially intraday and just, you know, just trade it smaller until I really hone in on how I want to trade it. Yeah, I think I, I thought, I guess, you know, like when you're starting out everything new, you're a bit lucky and uh, it just, it works out better quickly. And then over the long time, long, longer period, you kind of get rebalanced into you're not that great and you need to still put in a lot of work. And I feel that it's probably just what happened. Like the beginning was, I guess, a bit easier. And now um, it's just a bit tougher and things are not, I guess they're, they're still working out like, all right. I think maybe my expectations are really high because it's something um, that like when you backtest, you only see the news that really worked out well versus all the little news that like didn't do nothing. So I have to quantify which news are like the news that I want to trade and which news are not really the one I want to trade. And I think I haven't done that work yet. And that means I'm too focused on the news flow on and every big news or every news that's coming out, I'm going to try to get involved in a way versus saying like, uh, I don't care about these news. These are just like useless or like having my, my niche of news versus um, all news. Let's put it this way. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's like, a, yeah, you're just, you're still in that experimental phase and trying to just, and trying to find your way and what makes the most sense to you. 
Yeah, and balancing think, still taking some older trade and focusing more on the news. So I'm I'm a bit all over the place. I guess it's just readjusting. Um and I just have to uh keep on doing the work and I've been a bit exhausting myself into research, back testing and so on and so forth. So uh Yeah. It, I, it, you know, and the hope is the hope and the idea is that it's gonna it's gonna pay dividends, right? Like it's it's yeah. you know it you know, I don't know if you're in a big drawdown or if you're just down small or if you're just you know flattish. Um I guess I'm flat I mean if I'm down, I'm down a couple hundred bucks, like uh, pocket change. Let's put it. Okay, this way. and you, and you said you took a big rip in, in Riot the other day, right? So you know you're essential. Yeah, you're essential. That that was the one. Yeah, that kind of before that one, I was up on the month. Um, I took a pretty big rip just because the spread was a dollar. So, like, you don't need a big position to take a fat loss. Yeah. In like, uh, it just it was a blink of an eye, right? I just. I was talking to you during the day that like, ah, oh, maybe this one, they said in their 10K that they were going to raise soon. So I had it on my alerts for a filing. This is the alert I had. So I had this stock in a filing and the same day that I talk about it, I see the filing coming out. So the first thing I did, I did what I was game planning to do is I just hit like whatever I thought was going to be just like a starter size or av like whatever. It just ended up I got filled more than I wanted. And then I just look at the level two bid ask and I'm like, oh God, like now I just know I, I ruined my day plus much more. And I'm like, all right, so this is how I'm gonna close it, huh? Because I was I was done on the day, finished up, and this this news came out, and then I just got ripped. And I was like, Yeah, all right. That sucks. Like I, I was so pissed. I was like, why was it like I was still at my computer because I was just still watching stuff but yeah i guess um lesson learned the bit and this the the spread when you're trading intraday it's not something that you have to be be really worried about versus the after hour then it can just open up so fast yeah i mean you yes and no i mean like, there's there's still things like you know bkt tx or gen x the last couple of days like they're still spready right um yeah it just yeah you, you usually don't there's usually some more liquidity hidden somewhere and, where you just you know you don't have to you know after hours like you said it's just you have to be really cautious of, of where price was and, and where you know either the bid or the ask is um you know when you're trying to get in yeah so it's something i didn't really check and i kind of paid a price so so quick the time i got filled i was already down like max loss and i was like oh God. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, I, I, I've been there. I've been there. I, I like. It's. It's always. It always seems to work out like that too. Where like, your wins are like such grinders, right? Like where it just, you know, you're in a trade and you're you're waiting and you're waiting and you're just you're being so patient, and it takes like five hours for the trade to work out like to how you think it's gonna work out, and you know like the the losses are always like within thirty seconds, like always. Like I enter and it's just like you're always immediately wrong and you're just like, well, that sucks. <laughs> It, you never it's you're never wrong like slowly you're always wrong like as fast as possible yeah you're like this is the spot you get in it just rips back up and you're like yep all apparently, right apparently not <laughs> sorry for the interruption but if you have any question or topic that you'd like us to cover let us know in the comment section and while you're at it like and subscribe let's get back to the show so um do you have um a way that you you plan your swing trades not your swing trades but like I have this rule, it's it's a non-written rule, but it's like, I'm never gonna hold something overnight if I don't have already like a decent padding on it. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, that, that, then that's exactly that's exactly what I mean. Like I had entered that trade in, in anticipation that it could be a swing trade, you know? And obviously if, you, if I held until the absolute end of the day, you know, I, I would have been in the money, right? Because it, it closed at 77, but you know, at 345, it came back down in, you know, basically it came back, back down into like my, you know, 335, it came back down into my, my entry zone. And, I, you know, I just was like, well, is it going to bounce? Is it going to continue to roll over? Because it, you know, it, it, it did open up at 70, you know, 68, right? You maybe some profit takers going to come in to the end of the day. It's going to open up at 74 or, or close at 74 and still look like normally, you know, perfectly fine. And then maybe the next day, 
you know, kind of, you know, something happens to it. So you tried to get long into earnings around, I guess that would be your spot somewhere here. No, 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 uh, no. Yeah. You I was up here. Tried. So like, yeah. So earnings, it was down, right. It was like the earnings that goes down to like 70, um, yeah, mm -hmm. down there. And, uh, you know, and then it kind of rallies up and like, I didn't really see it at 72 ish at mm -hmm. that point in time for me, like I'm still thinking, I'm still thinking down, right? Because if you look at the daily, the daily, the bottom of the daily range was 72. Okay. Right. So this is where like my, for me, like confluence comes in and right. Gap so, down. Hold on. You're, th you're talking about this yep, one, right? So if you go back to that, if you yeah. go back to that five minute flag, um, then I'll just put it line. Yeah. yeah. It's an area, right? Like, so, yeah. Give or take. Yeah, give yeah. or take. Right. So, oh, yeah. wow. So yeah. when you're looking at that line and when it, and when, when it comes up there in the morning, um, I'm still thinking it's just short. Right. So, so I'm not going to get long there and not, I'm not necessarily thinking short, but this is the way I think in terms of trading, like I want a short week and, and buy strength. Um, mm -hmm. and so for me, I'm willing to give up the, the, that basically the $3, like $2 and 50 cents up to 76, because then that's more strength to me. Right. So if you, mm -hmm. if you go back to the daily chart, right, go back to that daily chart again, and then look at the last and you type in that, that last four or five day range, basically right before earnings day. Yep. Yeah. But there's, that's kind of the, the right, range right show. Uh, over that it's with a catalyst I, you would say it's it's a long below that with a catalyst you would say it's probably going to be well, a so especially yet. because it's and it's not and it's not just any price level that's just like an inside pivot to me right because then the, the real pivot is those if you go you know a couple of days to the left not right there yep what the one of those highs yeah the real pivot's like 80 bucks right and i think that's why you know as we're talking about this now you see this you know perhaps it obviously coincides with a new spike, but there's just so much more interest in such a great velocity of a move. Um, because now, now you're taking out this whole, this whole bigger range that, that people are looking at. Yeah. That was like such a good, and they, I mean, uh, and, 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 and yeah, if, if, you know, for me, like that's, that's like the perfect flag that I want to see. Um, you know, obviously I just kind of fumbled it today, but you know, I want to see a push up in the morning and then you want to see a, like a pullback into, um, you know, moving averages just to show that something's not too extended. And, you know, mm -hmm. that 79 area was, a, was a, for me, like a perfect entry for a possible um, swing because it, it's, you know, again, confluence with the daily range break, um, knowing that it just got earnings out of the way, it has very strong reaction to earnings. And, you know, these fast, re the fast reward in, in a matter of 50 minute bar that coincides with news is that's just, that's just icing on the cake. Right. Um, yeah. Cause technically the setup was there even without news. Yes, for you. Yeah. Technically the, yeah. But you know, well, there was news. There was still the, the recent earnings. So there was still a recent catalyst and we're breaking like, um, above a, a recent high. Yeah. But, yeah my, my, so, point, my point is that the, the, you know, when you enter a trade, everything's unknown, right? So, um, the, the, the reward side of the trade is the, is the unexpected, you know, and, and you know, fa a lot faster than, you know, mm -hmm. but Hey, you know, that's why I said that's dicing on the cake, right? If you get, if you get 10% in a matter of 15 minutes, because some, some news happens to, to break, then, you know, so be it. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good move of that news for real. It's pretty nice. Uh, yeah. And, and this is where, and this is, is, this is where like kind of knowing stocks is, is, um, important. So like for me, like shift four, like this stock has never been a really good day trading stock. Like, uh, I've never found success trading it on one minute or five minute. It just, I just can't seem to get a handle on it. I always seem to get stopped out. So like, you know you know, you can w watch this 86, maybe, maybe you could have bought 86 there. Right. Yeah. Eight, eight, yeah this 85, versus... 50, but you, but you need to give it mm -hmm. like, I think you need to give it $2, right? 85, 50, 83, 83, 50. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I don't like, I've gotten trapped too many times, like giving it that, that random, like 50 cent stop because I want to have more size. 
and then you kind of get wicked, <laughs> then you get you get wicked out right like maybe maybe what might be happening now you get wicked out and you know and then all of a sudden it's at, by the end of the day it's at 90 right so i you know <laughs> now you're talking my <laughs> language <laughs> i rule once more size it, it, and i think it, it's part part greed it's part greed it's part like you know trying to how do i maximize my gains as fast as possible you know they get rich fast quick thing right or like instead of proper trading or good trading you know or, or knowing that you need to risk the 8350 when you're looking at this flag it's well how can i get as much size as possible and really really minimize my risk and then i can post on twitter like i made 56 r <laughs> yeah because i use the one minute candle low right you know or, or whatever some someone's doing yeah so this is this is really hard um I mean, I guess this is a lot of hab a lot of habits that are are kind of built built in into me or other traders is we never really want to give it to the level that we're really wrong, and this is I don't know. I guess I guess is you're always thought to to trade like get the biggest or like always add to your position, right? If you're if you see that it's getting uh, even better, just add, and then you're kind of, you can't really risk again the level that you were supposed to. Like a good example would have been right there on that little one minute, right? If you're adding right like here, you get so big, then you have this candle that kind of crosses back the previous one and then you're flat, but the trade is still intact. Yeah, in, in, Nothing in, theory, changed. in theory, the trade is still intact. And like, you know, like I was just saying, like even if you're, you know, if you're, if you say to yourself, well, I'm going to use that, you know, I bought 8550, that little pivot high. I'm going to use the breakout, the breakout candles low as my stop. I, right. Yeah. I think you get stopped out, right. Based on that red, that red candle, doesn't it break that prior candles low? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. It does. And so look, it would have just cut your stuff exactly where yeah. it is. And now it's, it's right back yeah, up. And now look, it's, gonna, it's, I'm just well, going to go to, let's talk it's about go to it. 90, right. And, but um, so for me, I had the same issue that you, that you're talking about. Um, it was, it was yeah. a really big issue for me and I had to create a rule where I'm not, you know, and I will add risk to trades. Um, but it has to be smart. Uh, I have to add only when I can change my stop. So for example, in like, just, you know, as we're watching this, if I was going to add to this trade, I would have added af after the pullback candle. And then I would have say bought mm -hmm. 85 knowing, excuse me, I would have bought 87 knowing that I was moving my stop to 85, right? Something like that. I yep. don't think that's a really good mm -hmm. example. Um, like that's, I'm just using that because we're watching it, but I, I'm only going to add and move stops like after bigger pivots. Like that's not a big enough pivot for me to actually move my stop. Um, yeah, because if you look on like a higher time frame, nothing really exactly. changed. Yeah, and like, like that, those are my preferred yeah. time frames. But when you're trading news, sometimes you just have to trade those one minutes. Um, like now, now if you want, if you're looking at, it, I think it's kind of an exact double top, right? Maybe forty five, fifty cents. Mm -hmm. So it kind of cut the high and just yep. came back. So yeah. if a better a better ad spot instead of like those micro one minute pivots was all right. Now you're gonna have eighty seven fifty basically, and if you get this a tiny little one minute cup and handle, right? Call it where 85, 50 or 86 kind of holds. Um, may, and then as it, as it pushes higher, then you can add, add exposure because then, you know, you can move your risk, you know, but that's how, I, that's how I usually think about it. like, and too many times I would just watch the level two of the momentum or the prints and, and think or see like, oh my gosh, like every single print is green and the stock's going up like that, you know, I need, I need to, I need to add more size. Like this is this, this is it. This is when it's, it's literally going to go limit up, get halted, open up at 110 because they're going to confirm it and close out the deal now. Right. Um, <laughs> whatever it is, uh, right. Like everyone, everyone, yeah, know you know, mean. everyone, everyone gets caught in that, right. Where it's just like, oh my gosh, it's in my favor. It's in my favor. It's in my favor. Just, you know, everyone's paying offers. I need to have more size on because this is it. And and then, you know, it basically goes exactly to the high day and someone else and someone comes in and just as like dumps it. It's like, all right, I'm going to take my gains. <laughs> that was good enough. And, and you know, and, and now what are you now? You're a dollar fifty from that high and kind of hesitant. Now you're now you're playing defense when you shouldn't have to be.
right? I mean, it's everyone, everyone just makes it more mental than they have to, right? Because everyone, everyone, you know, everyone's throwing around asymmetric risk reward on Twitter, right? And you need to have asymmetric risk reward. And, and people are taking that as, I think a lot of people take that as, and I did this unintentionally for a long time, but I assume that there's asymmetric, asymmetric risk reward meant I'm risking a hundred dollars to make five grand. Right. But that, that, that the probabilities of that happening are, are so slim, um, on some random setup like this, right? You can't risk a hundred dollars buying 85 and risking 83, 75, hoping that you're going to make five grand, right? It doesn't work that way. Like reward is reward in terms of bigger P and L is in, is inherent with taking on more monetary risk as well. Um, it took me a, a long time to get that. And I still, I still struggle, struggle because I add a bit too, too fast to position just because I'm like, it, it looks really good. You know, it's, everything looks like it's a, it's a perfect setup, but then I just mess up my risk level because I have too much on. And... Yeah. So you, I think, I think that you just, in my opinion, it sounds like you just need to, to tighten up those rules a little bit, right? Like make sure that you, um, make sure that you are definitely able to move your stop, right? Because like, and that, you know, that was a big issue for me as well, right? Where I would just, you know, say buy, you know, back to the original entry 85 by 83.75. Um, you buy and say you buy, you're buying one R and then all of a sudden I'm, and I'm just chasing 86. And, and I'm, and I'm adding a, I'm adding a same size lot. Right. So again, let's go with this hundred dollar risk here. So if you're risking a dollar 25, you're buying what 80 shares the first time. And then, and then I, you know, then, then what, then I was, I would just buy like the same amount of shares, right? Like another 80 shares, but the 80 shares, if you're buying 86, you're, yeah, you're, you're risk, all of a sudden now your risk from 80, your hundred dollar risk now all of a sudden goes up to I don't know, like 240 bucks or whatever it is. Um, so you're increasing your risk without it changing your stop. So those, those are big rules that I, I created for myself, like making sure that I don't add up, I don't add size until, or add to my position until I know I can change my stop. Look at Luna. Lunar. Look at Lunar. Uh... So the stock didn't do anything all day. And all of a sudden there was this uh, conference that was scheduled and it just gave like such a nice setup on like multiple time frame um and like it's the, you don't even need like a specific news you just need to connect to their feed and then um the guy just looked confused and then we had the initial sell off and this is something that we discussed that um on the first move it's it's really hard to kind of be the first or have conviction just because it's such it goes very fast and you might only get like you know, like prints around, you know, 890. And then you have to risk like 10, 1020, I guess, before the news. Maybe you're lucky it has this like big wick on this one, but they don't all do that. So I'm really trying to just to capitalize on the secondary move like this one. But I think if I look even at like a one minute, there was probably a better spot. Try to go back to yeah, but, where I mean, it was. <clears throat> when you're trading news like this, there's always... I don't want to say always because then some this is going on the internet and then someone's going to say, well, you said always, um, almost always a, a pullback like this for a secondary move where you can gauge your risk reward and, and you're, and you can gauge the risk reward based on, you know, as I've mentioned, like, you know, a measured move, just like SMCI. So you see that the, the, the potential for a move from 1050 down to $6 is there. And, and it's not necessary that you're not necessarily going to get that after the first flag and breakdown, but right. So now, but now you're at 750, you know, you can just, you can size it, size your trade, knowing that target one should be the low of the spike because spikes always, if you look at the history of spikes, they almost always get retested. Um, they always, I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, our, and, and so, so that's, that's your target one. And right there, you, there's a, that's like a dollar 50 move. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. That's, and that that's was enough because the, the, here it's so, it's so tight. Like you risk what, like 20 yeah, cents, you can, you know, max 30 cents. And you 30 get like cents, a, really, a but, I mean, 50? if you want to be really, if you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to really, really 
treated properly, you know, you probably want to risk the top of that, which is going to be like a 70 cent, 50 cents, right? Because yeah. it's eight, it's, excuse me, it's 770. 825, yeah, 770. So 50 yeah. Okay, so um, 50 cents. You know, that's, that's still going to be a 3R trade. Um, but obviously, you know, you can definitely trade it tighter if you think that that's the breaking point, you know, because it's the apex of your little triangle. Um, yeah. So here I would probably like, you know, have like a, something versus here. But then when we start to roll, I would probably just add in and just tighten up. And that's, I guess, this is where we talk about not letting the trade work versus trying to get really big. Um, I don't know, maybe on this one, this one, it would have worked, but there's many scenarios that we know we, we move a bit down we have a little spike up again, and then we really flush. So this is where it gets a bit tricky in, yeah, in scenario, I mean, um, when you're trying to why, get too big, that, you know, that's why trying to have the same, the same process every single time is, is so important, right? Because then, you know, even if you get stopped out or whipped out or, or trailing stopped out if you followed your process, then you can't, that'll help take some of the emotions out of the trade. Right. And, and really creating those rules for myself helped manage my emotions. Um, like that, like, I don't, you know, and, and like, unlike a lot of traders who might be kind of finding feel of positions and adding positions, I'd rather just have a bigger one R than, take so many trades and paper cuts because you're just, you have to be so focused on, on, on waiting, waiting for that spot. Right. I'd rather just wait and wait and really see that tightness and just be like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to hit it here and, you know, risking whatever I would choose to risk, you know, maybe this case, um, instead of using the top of the wicks, you can just use above eight, you know, so risking 30, 35 cents or so, um, on that trade. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the top yeah, and, the, the, and, the, and the then you can kind of, you know, you can get a little more size and then that, then it's like a five R trade for you instead of a three R trade. Um, you know, and then for me, I'd probably cover half ish into the low for the three or five R let's just say four R for split the difference. And, you know, and then, and then I'm yeah. kind of, I'm going to let it, you know, again, knowing, knowing what we just said, like, all right, well, it came off, you know, let's just say three bucks, you know, me like, can this go down to the five, go down to five, another dollar. So you can get close to that measured move. Like maybe, you know, you, you just, you never know, you never know. Um, and, and, you know, maybe you're, and then you're watching the one minute, if you're still watching the one minute, then you're trailing. Or if you change it to a bigger, a bigger time frame, like, like the five minute, you can trail, trail, trail that way. Like, because it's what's well, pretty late on a Friday. I don't think I would really, oops. I don't think I would after like a flush there, I think when it fails like a second time um, to go lower, I think I have to get flat. And it was so such news driven that I don't think I would want to swing something like this um, because they could have like some random, like it's a, it's a story stock. Like it's all about a, the story mm -hmm. on this one. There was also some legit stuff about going to the moon, but because there's so much story, this company can just really go with like, uh, a big PR press release, and next thing you know, we're gapping back above freaking 13. Or if NASA says something like really outrageous, like you know, it could just has this incredible uh, short squeeze the next day. So I don't think it's something you would want to swing short. Um, any thoughts on that? Would you think it's something you want to get short because there's a well, news? Well, I mean, that that's that's all up to the trader, right? But, um, so like that news Friday afternoon was when they landed on the on the moon. And I think I'm pretty sure the, the little lander, it tipped over, right? So it was, you know, people were yeah. watching the feed and, and listening to the CEO or someone talk and all of a sudden the, the thing tips over, you know, so it was kind of a sell the news and sell the, what the heck just happened kind of thing. And yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a great swing short trader. Um, I'd rather try to just get long, but, uh, I could see it going both ways, right? If you're short from eight, like what, like the event has happened. So my thesis would be like the event has happened, right? It landed on the moon. Like what, you know, what are they going to come over? What are they going to come out and say? The only thing I would be worried about is, is there like arms, like robotic arms or something that are like a thruster that's going to 
make it stand up so that mon by the time Monday morning rolls around, the thing's up and walking around or moving around or, or doing whatever it's supposed to be doing. And, you know, you wouldn't be able to, you know, you can't control your risk basically. So yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you that I, I think that the better trade would be to cover. Um, it just, you know, I, would I, would you, would you still be trading on the one minute at six, six o'clock on a Friday afternoon or, Maybe you're looking for maybe people are, are other people going to start coming back on, on a Friday after the close to, to kind of sell positions, you know, maybe that was just the move and that's it. So, you know, you, st you, take, you take the trade for what it is and you move on. Yeah, I, th I thought it was a pretty like you went from 11 to six. Right. So I, at a certain point, um, things are not going to go down in straight line. So you can't I mean. You can you can wish for, but realistically, it's going to be a bit tougher to go down more than fifty percent in like a matter of like an hour or something like that. Like it's very rare. Um, yeah, so I th I thought that was a trade, but you know when something is that in play, and this is what I've been kind of sending you a bunch of message about is like all these news trade or these like big trade. When it's a really big trade, there's normally going to be a secondary setup. Like, or if it's a big news, it's gonna have the second setup to to really confirm that, like, okay, we're really going lower. This is impactful versus a massive wig down that I can that I just you know get involved with, and then you know I take a fat loss um, just because I bottom I I took I shorted the bottom of that wig and covered the the exact reference point up. So yeah, so um, so I I thought that was it because the more I reviewed. And been on this, I don't know, rampage of like reviewing charts, events, and stuff like that. All the big event as such a nice secondary move that I'm like, I can just double the size on the second confirmation or whatever it is, and just don't need to be involved in the first one. Let people chase it, let people guess, and let me get involved where I know I can like have like a the real edge, or can, I can like play a news trade but control my risk a bit better. More as like a traditional trader, which I w I was and I still am for, I don't know, four years, right? So, so it's a good blend of two fresh catalysts combined with like good, I guess, uh, base around trading or technical analysis. I think. I mean, we can look at an example from today, right? Um, let's look at you know, you can look at Bitcoin or Bitcoin selling off, and um, you know, Robinhood and, and Coinbase having all these issues today. Um, and you know bitcoin topped yep. out started selling off and you know then you're getting reports that coinbase you know coinbase people were not getting access to their wallets you know or whatever it was and people, you know like you don't have to you know or yeah you watch one of these bitcoin miners the, yeah that's the initial move every every little flag or pullback is going to look a little different right and that's and that's what you have to remember yeah. um that it, it's just going to rhyme, right? It's not going to be exact replica. So, you know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're a believer in this thesis, you know, you might get stopped out the first time. Say you short, you know, short right there. Say you short after that little consolidation or, or the one, yep. Yeah, yeah. so you might get right stopped here, out. But as soon as price like kind of fails view up mm -hmm. again, if you're still a believer in this measured move thesis and there's a fresh catalyst and whatever, you know, then you can short there, mm -hmm. you know, and you can still, and you can still make a measured yeah. move, a measured move lower. Yeah. Cause, um, actually on this one, I didn't get involved in this. I don't think many people, um, I mean, for sure there did, right. Considering the move, um, people got involved there. They found out about the news. This is where really everybody found out it was like this peak low. And then, you know, it said once, twice, it didn't like, I tried like right here. Then I got like stopped out like there. Uh, then I kind of just moved away. And the reason why is I have in my Evernote, like something that's important is after a big move, I need to give it time to consolidate or to find its footing before just trying to get mm -hmm. involved again. And technically like, okay, maybe it didn't work, but then after when we, we don't rally back to reference point pretty much, and we hold these like low and we test it once again, I think right here, um, right here versus probably this like pivot high or maybe here versus this high. And then you can get like a pretty nice uh, move on. Yeah. I mean, news. for me, like even, you know, just looking at this, like just, 
even if you if you're waiting for more confirmation right you, you can call it like a little one minute cup mm -hmm. and handle you know that little flag right there like yeah, all right here that, that 31 25 area was was an important pivot and not yeah and now you're getting a, a little... flag with a new catalyst at the low of the day so anyone who's dip bought you know they're going to be using that low of day as a stopping point um you know so you mm -hmm. can kind of get in with 20 25 30 cents worth of risk just and just waiting and just being patient waiting for that flag or waiting for that consolidation you know yeah. and, you, and you get right you get like a nice i don't know like doubt yeah two to one probably well, if you risk depending on where you get yes. in right so I, I would say your entry is probably a little bit higher than the low of the day so like, maybe like say 75 or 80 cents um yes mm -hmm. so you're seeing 20 cents probably if you're getting involved in there versus where would you risk like i'd probably risk here? i like would that, risk above that yeah up. because that because that 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 25 yeah. cents was the inflection point before so if it doesn't make a new low of day mm -hmm. you know then then my thesis or my thinking would be that it's a possible possible double bottom right um but I've given it yeah. more time to kind of show for that confirmation. Um, again, and and so my risk reward is going to be a lot lower than someone who's shorting, um, you know, those that that bounce a little earlier, closer to yeah, closer right to thirty two. Yeah. But for me, I'm getting more confirmation, um, and I think that my, it's going to make my probabilities of success higher. Uh, and I'm, I'm willing to take a smaller risk to you know, a, a smaller gain of R. Uh, for that to happen. Yeah, so you you technically increase your your win rate, but you get less uh, reward as a yeah. as a cost yep, or exactly. cost of doing business. Okay. Yeah. So, but you see, um, that's a, a good example because I got involved right here and then I stopped out right here, and then when it, the move really happened, um, I just I <laughs> wasn't even there. Yeah, I mean, so, and again, you know, part of it's part of its time frame, right? So. One thing for me is, yeah, if that's I, I was just about five, to tell you. Like, you know, you, it's it's, this, oh, it's wow. the same thing. Like, you get if you look at fives, you get a couple bottoming tails, and you get like a nice reversal candle right there where it just fails the five minute moving averages. Um, sometimes these things just need more time, right? Sometimes they just move, and that's and that's like your you're risking fifty cents there to make two dollars. That's your four hour trade right there, right? Yeah, I, I mean, four hour is four hour, right? And it just it just everyone everyone has to find their time frame and for me like the one minute you know and, and there's when there's news like yeah i'll watch it but i know that I, my win rate decreases dramatically because there's there are so many more wicks or like those little stop out runs like that four um you know whereas the five minute just it allows you or uh, using a 15 minute or a 30 minute it just allows you to really see like pivot points a little bit closer or, or what's like really chopping around in, in this, you know, you're not making as many quick random decisions. Yeah. And I think you're slowly convincing me to go with the higher time frame, and um, not for, but even on this one, if you were looking at it as like uh, just a technical trade, like, you know, we're just, it's a felt breakout above that high. Um, like, I don't like without like very much news and it's so Bitcoin correlated. I don't think I would short it, but I uh, like it. When you look at the higher time frame, it, it was like, this is technically your trade, like the yeah. cut right here. And then for sure, then it's, you manage it the way you want to manage. But the, the one I wanted to kind of review was like Apple. I'm not going to be a big fan of trading it, but there was a bit of negative press, I guess, because of the Apple, um, the vision the vision pro the new apple yeah exactly and like even if it's not something i would really trade like even when you as soon as you zoom out on a higher time frame like you can see such like clean setup like just like right here and then you know it, it got help because there was some uh mm -hmm. some event going on so it sold off a bit more towards the low but well like you know yeah, and i don't so i don't like doing time, this um you know i i like let's do this without um the benefit of hindsight showing the whole chart if you go back to the 15 minute and just go back to the 15 minute but then but yeah but just scroll it to the left a little bit so we can no, no but we don't want to see today though yep yeah, I want you to see want today. to see right yeah so uh, yeah give me one second all right so but yeah but, trying to yeah, get no, this no, whole uh but can you go like one candle at a time? Yeah. So keep going a little farther. Keep going a little yeah. farther. No, no. Yeah. Oh, so oh, like, oh, no. Keep going. Just now go candle by candle, basically. 
do you think that that's a definite entry? I mean, maybe, right? Maybe, maybe you can get a feeler entry, but because it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's another topping tail after four candles up all in, all in lower volume. And it's kind of, it's kind of come back into those prior tops, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that that's definitely a plus. Now keep going another candle or two. All right. So now this is your confirmation candle, right? All right. Maybe the trend's going to continue yeah. and then go one more candle. And that's, that's where I would want to get involved. Like, this is how I, this is how I'm thinking of it. Now I'm getting a nice topping tail, like inside candle after the trend, after, you know, after that pullback has kind of slowed down. So now I would look to get in, say like below the red candle. Like It's very, very close to the low. And this is like compared to this one or even these ones. This yeah. is such and so a now, tight now range. That, that moving average is kind of held in twice. And now it's kind of, it's kind of, I want to say like, I call it like kind of, pushing it's it's getting ready to push it push it in the in that direct in the same direction mm -hmm. um you know and you take a little bit yeah. of heat and and maybe if you're more conservative you're using the top of that prior red candle as your stop but if you want to be aggressive to get more size you can use the inside candle because the idea is that the inside candle is showing it shouldn't it shouldn't, it cross, shouldn't yeah. fail the top the top shouldn't fail and then that's it right and you know you have okay. a new catalyst at the new low yeah. phase um yeah, there was this, after that, there was also news on it. So it kind of helped. So that was still a pretty good. I think, I think that, I think yeah, that what so happens to too sure. many traders is because we're sitting here and you, and you can now watch every single tick and you can watch one minute charts and you can, and you can really try to refine, re refine your entries. It, it, in this day and age when you can go on social media and you can kind of just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, right? It just, it gives, <laughs> everyone is so impatient. Yeah. Um, and so many people are looking for that, that junky action where, you know, yeah. if you, if you just give it some time, knowing that the, you know, knowing that you're, you're knowing that you can find and wait, wait for your, for your particular setup. Um, I think a lot of people's results would improve dramatically. Yeah. So another example, I guess, of the news, cause we're really in the topic. It was yesterday. There was news on like, well, we're talking about Apple also. So there was news on Apple, um, like legit news that they decided to stop pursuing electric car. And I like, you know, I had like a pretty nice um, week, I would say, like a, like a volume um, print, right? Saying that on that news. So there was different interest. I didn't think the news was that significant. Um, and you told me a bit otherwise, because you were saying that like, it's actually a, a big news because it just shows that they're going to stop kind of wasting their time on that. And they're going to focus more on what they do best, which is other stuff, right? The other half of the headline was that they were stopping electric vehicles to focus more on generative AI, right? So they're, you know, I'm an iPhone user and I think that Siri stinks, right? <laughs> I like that. I never use it. And, and they've, so they've basically really dropped the ball in my opinion on, having an, an, a really good AI product. And, you know, basically this news headline is them coming out saying that they're stopping with the electric car and they're going to focus on generative AI models. Right. So I, so that, that, that was the key to the headline, right? Because everyone knows right now, AI is super hot and, you know, with NVIDIA chat GPT and perplexity and, you know, even with, with the whole news with Google, right. It, it's, it's just, it's very in play right now. Um, you know, and again, like, look at Apple, like it, it's the same thing. Like, you know, people, if you just give it 10 minutes, 15 minutes, looking at one minute candles, you get a, you get a base, you get like a, you get a spot where you can risk, you can find a good risk reward. Um, you know, the five, yeah. minute, what, I don't think the five minute was as good Even, on this one. I, um, for sure now I have the benefit of hindsight. Well, there was like a lot. I felt like the news and the structure was so well um, time. I'm going to clear up a bit of things because it's getting uh, crowded. But so we had this such um, like a, a longer time frame, I guess, level that you would want to watch. Like, you know, we have yep. kind of this. And this was also like an earnings level, just maybe a bit lower, give or take. Uh, sure. And then we have like a, a news, right? That hit 
and it's an unexpected news. It's not something that was like planned or stuff like that. And before the news, technically, we're just hovering towards the like mm. the important level. And the news headline, it just like, I think, well, I think people like, you know, when they just like, first of all, I know like when news hit and you see all the prints going down, well, you get short. Like you don't ask yourself, well, do I think it's good or bad? You just, if the trend is short on that news, you kind of go with the flow. And then it kind of feels like, oh, people realize that it's actually very good news. So it kind of reverses pretty quick and creates this yep. like massive tell. So I thought like even even if you're kind of a longer time frame, would you wouldn't you think that like just getting almost involved right here versus like this um I don't I wouldn't say it's a reference, but it's like a, a very important level and then you can kind of just trail from uh, that. Yeah, point on. I mean you totally could, right? I mean it it's it's all it for me it's just it's it's I've it's something I'm actually working on because it's something that I've noticed more and more using that prior, like say stop as, a, as my risk point versus using the wick and like, like waiting for that wick stop run, um, waiting for that wick stop run and then getting involved with my original stop. Like, you know, it's kind of like the thesis, you know, the problem with this trade is that it happens literally in two minutes, right? So again, so that's why I said like now, now that now you get that little base, it's like, all right, it's, it's holding above like stop run pushes higher, comes back in lower volume, right? Everything that we, that, that you want, or you're taught to see. Yeah. And you can kind of see that little flag where it's okay. Maybe I, you know, instead of risking the lows, you can risk the bottom of that, that one minute pullback right there. Um, like 40 cents ish. Yeah. You know, and it's, yeah, so you and you're risking get, 30, 40, 50 cents. Right. Like, you know, if if maybe you get in on that tight one minute candle that holds BWAP, and then maybe you add some there, or maybe you, you, you know, I'm, I'm I wouldn't be adding there, but maybe you're adding over the high of the day after you get that little three bar consolidation because you can move your stop up. Um, you could probably move it like somewhere around here, I guess. Or would you, like this is this is the, these spots that I. I get in trouble because I'll add right here. Then I get this wick that's gonna go whoop, and then they say, "No, no, we're just kidding. I'm buying it back up." And well, then I mean, like, oh. so so say like, you know, go back, go back. Let's not let's not look at all the all the history right now. Let's go back and, and game plan this again. Um, so th this is like so again, like I like inside candles. So it's gonna be seven oh six on based on the time frame that you're looking at seventeen oh nineteen oh six. Yep. So that's like an inside one, okay, candle sorry, yeah. you get. A, and the candle before that is a, another bottoming tail that has a higher bottom than that original pullback mm -hmm. candle. So I would think that I could add, I could buy above that candle with a stop either, you know, basically get that pivot low, right? So I'm going to buy 80, what's that, whatever the high is, 81 or 82. I'm risking, I'm, I'm going to risk the original yeah, pullback. Um, so I'm going to risk like 40 cents. Right yep. Um, and then, you know, and then as you go through these candles, you see a red candle and then you see another tight green candle. Maybe I'm buying a little bit more there. Again, like I don't love adding unless I know I can move my stop. So I'm probably not buying there. So now you get a 181. Now you get a breakout of 181 where you're at. And then and then you get a red candle, right? And this. Yeah, this is the same as we the first example yep. we looked yep. and at then, today. And then as soon it's as like, and then now that's yeah, that's the spot that you know you can move your risk once. 181 21 is taken out so now that's where i would i would add you know so my original entry was going to be 85 cents ish i'm going to add it 21 cents mm -hmm. but my stop is going to be below that red candle so basically where my re yes like yeah. this one so that's so, how i yeah. move my stops right Every, everyone has to figure out what works for them right um okay and, and then that's how you can add a risk so and so basically your original entry is at break even and now so, you know, and you can add one R worth of risk over the high a day, which should, you know, based on, on, on the distance should be approximately the same size as what you bought originally. Right. Yeah. Cause you, yeah. Cause then your average would be probably 181. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you yeah, it's going to be, it's, gonna be, it's like probably like 181 oh five ish. If you're, if you're, if you're actually doubling up Yeah. Um, and, and a little bit below 181, if you don't double up. 
and then and then that's it and then you just watch the candles watch the candles and even if you just trail on a one minute candle low basis right how, how far does it go right it goes all the way up to 180 you're, you're getting at a 182 right there right if you're just using a, a simple trailing strategy of, of like i'm gonna i'm not gonna get out until it breaks one you know candle low and then you're making 90 cents so right the original stop was 40. so you were risking and, and that, that right there is a little too hard trade yes more than that i think because if you're 181 and you were after adjusting your stop at you would you wouldn't adjust bill at this level well no I'm, but i'm basing my my i'm basing it based on where my original risk was right so if we originally entered and the okay. original stop was at 40 at 180 40 on that pullback low the original stop was 40 cents right so so it you know you know and then, and then and that's only if you if you trail like that right like if if you you know if you say i'm not going to move my trailing stop until until i get a pullback and a move and then a move higher maybe you maybe you pull maybe you don't stop out anything and, and then that's where your new stop is 18170 and like all right let's see what happens right and then you move your stop and then and then and then you yeah. just see where it, it where it can go um you know and, and I, 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 this is all yeah, worth I like think... selling is just as personal as as buying an entry right like i don't you know it, it you have to find what works for you um and what and what really speaks to you yeah yeah so technically if you're even being more i guess i would say wider than i would trade it you're still getting probably the maximum on your trade because get it involved here versus your 180 40 42 whatever give or take you get your first move and i think after the first move maybe you take a bit off but then we kind of just have like this micro pullback and we're never really even breaking below that like one minute candle. So then like when we break again, this is like such a good spot to adjust. And over here, you know, we kind of fl get really flat with the moving average and like, like you would probably cut it, like really get flat, like fully yeah, flat somewhere. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Whatever In I had left, that's exactly where I would get flat because you want to hold as much as long as possible, right? That's that's always that's always the goal. And how do you do that? You know, for me, I like looking at I like looking at the shape of the moving averages compared to price. And, um, you know, it, it, it like you're, you're getting really flat. It's, flat. it's not yeah. and like that that little f that you know that inverse wick candle right there. That's that's this kind one, of that, yeah. that that same key of what, what you were talking about, where the igniting from the daily, right, or, um, from the bottom, right. So it's it's the exactly same thing as, the inverse, as here, yeah, because it's holding the moving averages, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know I like these moving average bumps where price is being supported by the moving average. If that momentum on this particular time frame is going to continue, then it should keep going, right. But the fact that you see that reversal candle. That it should pull the fact yeah. you get the reversal candle and then that inside little candle, it, it makes me that's where I would like, all right, I'm going to I'm going to move my stop or, or or sell more with when this when this breaks. Yeah, um, I was so mad. I didn't take it right here and I, I saw it and I was like, oh, whatever. I don't think it's big enough as a news. Then he makes the first move and I'm like, ah, you know, who, who cares? Whatever. I just missed like a small move then that like. I keep on watching it. I'm like, oh, damn, really? Like this was like, this was the, sl the slowish best trade I could have took in a long time. Like everything was lined up perfectly. The technical, there was a catalyst and all this was, I had it right in front of my face. And I was like, and instead of like listening to the price, you know, there was like, you know, how many checks did I needed to take that trade? Fresh catalyst, like a really high volume compared to everything we see before on the chart. So like it's really in play. Now I also get a setup on the one minute chart that's in the, the same direction as the news positive, right? Then, you know, like uh, people were talking about it. It's uh, it's AI driven. It's in the team is in play. So there was like a lot of check for me to take it and I didn't take it. And that's so frustrating because I... Like sometimes the best trade, you just look at them from the sideline because you decide to judge that, you know, you're trying to put your judgment on something that you have no clue about. You're not there to, 
um, decide? Like, how, exactly. how do you know? We don't know, right? We just take trades yeah, and we it, hope for the best. You, you hope that you're not just hoping for the best, right? You're hoping that you're putting yourself in, in the highest probability positions, right? That works for your personality. Again, like, you know, <clears throat> you can scroll, scroll back to the left, right? Like even, you know, based on, on the way that I'm trying to, and I'm not preaching my particular trading strategy, like it's just ha what works for my personality. Say you, and even if you miss all of this, right? Everything that I've been, that we've talked about in the examples that we've shown in these last couple of videos, you don't like, say that's kind of an indecision point for you until 181, like just, all right, well, we got like a nice reversal and I'm going to get involved in the first flag, right? The first consolidation where I can gauge my risk for trend continuation, right? So keep going one candle, one candle. Um, and, and, and people might've gotten involved at 181, um, like a 182 area. No, keep going a little, a little more, 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 a little more. Right. So like right there, like right there, like, this, you like know, look at if this. you're using the one minute moving averages, right. So, you know, one, one minute moving averages, again, not my favorite time frame, but all right. It's holding this little momentum moving average. You get two really tight candles. Um, maybe I can buy back through 182 or maybe back through this, this little flag risking that pullback low, right? R risking that risking that little doji candle low, yeah. right? Like uh, two candles. Yeah, so 182 versus 2177. So like 23 cent. 23, um, 23 cent risk to see if you can get um, a continue, like a momentum continuation to the upside, right? So just even that trade was like a home run technically versus yeah, and, how much and like, you were risking. You don't know, right? That, that's that's the thing Like you don't know and, and like that's it's for me like every time when i've talked to traders or like you know or like you like or other other people you know it's like oh that it was so easy you know it was so obvious but just like the smci example from last week you know i don't think enough people really go through like candle by candle and really think to yourselves you know and i've, I've talked to someone else about this like what were you really thinking in the moment right it's not this was so obvious like like, what were you thinking in the moment? Because that's that's the thing that really matters to trading and making a decision. It's like, even even this little hindsight exercise. It's really easy to say because we know what happened. But in the moment, like what were you what were you really thinking? And like for me, like that's why I prefer to just go with momentum instead of trying to think that somewhere was the top. Like waiting for that little pullback. Like I'm usually thinking to myself, like if there's a higher low. And it breaks back through an inflection point. I want to go. I want to try to go with it, right? And um, and you know, and and exactly knowing the things that I've kind of spelled out. It made a dollar move higher. It's consolidating. Maybe it can make another dollar move higher, right? Or you know, two dollar move higher, and you know, it made a two dollar move higher. Maybe it can consolidate and make a dollar fifty to two dollar move higher, right? Like, and then you know, it's it just keep it as simple as possible. Um, for what works for your personality yeah talking about uh personality and also i would say time frame like i'm if i'm trading something with not news i'll guess i would prefer to trade five minutes and like if i'm five minutes candlestick um when was the how did you decide that this was just the way you were gonna go because it's kind of odd i think you're the first one first person that I do meet that's really serious about it. Not many people say, oh yeah, I look at multiple time frame, but technically they just look at the one minute. They just have other time frame open somewhere on their screen that they don't even look at. But you really look at the five minute. Like this is your time frame. And I guess for the like very for the open, are you open to talk about it a bit? Yeah. Maybe yeah. how you yes. process <clears throat> your sure. thing. Um, okay. You want me to what do you want me to do? Do you want me to show a screen share or do you want to just talk about it? Uh, we can, I mean, we kind of went over the, the idea, but like how, uh, like, how do you process a trade? Because you look at mainly the so five minutes, it, so I you're going to look at. The way that someone processes a trade is still going to be the same. And that it took me a long time to learn that because I was taught to look at the level two. I was taught to look at those like one minute candles in, in even shorter time frames. Um, mm -hmm. but I just, I realized that I was making, you know, 
there's something that out there that people talk about. It's called decision fatigue, right? And and basically your body mm-hmm. your body makes the best decisions. And this is this is why I'm very anti like waking up at 4:30, right? Because um, like some of those people that say that that's what you have to do to get ahead. Um, your body makes the best decisions. But your body makes the best decisions um, within like the first two or two and a half hours of the day, basically from waking up. Um, and then after that, like you, you, as you make more and more decisions throughout the day, they're, they're just not as good. So for me, I realized that watching the one minute candles like that, like on Apple, like at the open all day long, or at, and even starting in the pre-market when, you know, if, 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 and when I was trading pre-market stuff, by the time the open came around or by the time the mid morning, when the true trends came around, when the, the quieter noise came around, you know, versus that open where the, it's, it's like controlled chaos. Like I wasn't making the right decisions. Mm-hmm. I, cu- I couldn't make the right decisions. Um, so for me, I just, I made the, the choice that I wanted to just see a little more confirmation. I wanted to just be involved more with the bigger picture versus only being in, involved in the first five to 10 minutes a day. Like, you know, most of the, you know, Twitter warriors out there. Right. Like I, I don't, you know, and there's exceptions, right? Like there's exceptions, like if it's a news like this, or if it's earnings, you know, I will watch the one minute or if it's the, if I really love a setup and a pivot on an earning stock, for example, or a new stock, I'll watch the one minute for the first five or 10 minutes of the day, you know, basically until two five minute candles form. And I can kind of get a better picture for like what the story of the day might be. Right. But my best trade, my best trades, for me really happen when, when that noise, when there's like volatility contraction, right? So you get those first three, five minute candles of the day, for example, 15 minutes and you get a push and then you get a pullback or a consolidation and, or, or a tight candle gauging the risk, knowing that there's interest in the name and knowing that there's almost always going to be continuation. Like that's for me, the better risk reward versus the, um, when it's spreadier and moving faster and I have to make fast, quick decisions in the morning, like I'm just not good at that. Or I've decided that I'm just not good at that. Right. It's like, it's a, it's a young, young kids game. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like a video game. Like the younger kids, like younger kids, like take it as a video game. Right. It's like just, they, it's like an action junkie dopamine, dopamine hit where you're just, you're trying to be involved in, in, in the fastest moving thing with as much size as possible, looking for the fastest gain, you know, but it, as I've, I've learned and as I've talked to many different traders, there's so many different ways to skin the cat, you know, and it, and it, it's personality. It just, it just comes down to personality and there's no right or wrong, right? There's no right or wrong. It just, it has to work for you. Yeah. Um, I guess it takes a, last year, I guess it was August, I think. I I went um August, September, October. I went three months on the five minute only without like like the checklist I had. Um the checklist I had every morning was like I'm not allowed to look at the one minute. That was kind of my thing. Like I'm just this was what, like a goal on every day. I'm not allowed to look at the one minute because I wanted to see if um it would make a big difference. And I just, what makes, what made a big difference was just the frequency of trading. That was just so much, so much lower. Um, and yeah, the frequency and the amount of tickers is because there's not many set up on a five minute chart versus on a one minute that you get a lot of micro action. Yeah. Well, that's, that's personality, right? Are you looking for that micro action? Like Ryan, I know people that I started trading with that still look at those one minute charts or, you know, short time frames and focusing on the level two, because they're looking for that, not looking for, but that's what their edges, their edges speed and looking for those little micro flushes up or flushes down, um, and trying to catch then trying to catch those quick moves because, you know, as we've seen in, in a lot of these moves, like, you know, Coinbase today or, or Mara or, or all these other, all these other names on the one minute, you can see that there's, there is, there are like big moves, but, um, I think that looking at that, you're going to get stopped out a lot more and you have to be willing to get back in. You have to be willing to trade a lot more. And for me, I I didn't want to trade as much. I wanted to see 
I wanted to see those bigger inflection points so that I could give myself more conviction, right? So the, the, because there's two ways to make a lot of like, to grow your P&L really, right? You know, if you think about your risk reward and your expected value, you can either, you're, you can either increase your frequency a lot or you can increase your risk size, you know, more, right? And, and, and you know, for me, I'd rather have more conviction on a higher time frame, even though I'm not going to have as many signals or not, not as many setups. Um, so when I do see something, I'm okay with taking that like extended, or, excuse me, not extended, but increased risk versus trying to scalp a couple hundred dollars, you know, over and over and over or $50, hundred dollars, whatever you're, whatever it is, right? Like you can, because you know, you're not going to be risking $10,000 on a, on a little, for example, you know, not that I risk $10,000 on a trade, but like ever, but you can, you can risk, you know, you're not gonna be able to risk that in like a, when you think that you might be wrong 30 seconds later. Yeah. Because every big trade, I mean, I'll take me because I know how I trade, but every big trade that I took or I made like a significant amount of money compared to my average day to day trade, they never cut. Sure, I executed it on the one minute, but it was like a daily setup or it was like a hourly setup. It was like so. Yeah. yeah and so I know like I know like a lot of like, you know, what you were saying before, like a lot of traders, Twitter traders, whatever, they, they're always focusing on the one or the three and like that's their, that's their thing. But, you know, when we spoke, I liked a five and a 15 and I'll have an hourly and a daily. It's all on the same screen right in front of me. And and the best, the best, the best, the best trades are always multiple time frame, like confluence, right? Multiple time frame confluence that just, they all, it all just lines up and all breaks at the same time. And, and, and those are always the best moves. Yeah. When you see a setup on a one minute, but it, it does, you don't even see it on a five, you almost you get in five minutes or not even five minutes 40 seconds later you already wicked out and you're like that wasn't good then you try again yeah. like two minutes later and you're like oh this one worked and then you look at you know hindsight of course you look and that was like yeah that was a break of prior five or prior 15 you're like yeah it was just there yeah it just but it just needed time to set it up there right yeah. like you know and too many times so many times and this was i made these adjustments because there's so many times i would look and all of a sudden I'd see like the perfect one minute flag that I was like looking for. And it's like, oh my God, like I got to take this trade. It's finally going sideways for like eight minutes, you know, and it's definitely going to continue and make this massive move. And all, you know, and I finally started reverse engineering and looking at the bigger time frames and seeing that, well, that was really dumb because it was like six, five, you know, six 15 minute candles in a row up. <laughs> You know, um, so the bit larger time frame is so extended, right? It needs a rest and a pullback. Like I'm, I'm looking at this micro one minute flag at the high of the day, thinking that this is like the next like little break of, you know, break and go, you know, thinking that I'm a genius because I finally found a tight spot, but you know, <laughs> that's amazing. That's the, uh... I mean, and I know because I, I, I did it so many times, you know, I did it so many times and like, and every once in a while I will catch myself and I still do it. And just because it's like, all right, there's, this is like that low float thing that's in play. It's, it's like approaching like the, like what I call, like I, when you see like a lot of low floats, like um, you'll get like a lot of like, uh, like orders finishing, like um, whether it's like uh, margin calls or whatever into lunchtime, like 11 30, 12 o'clock before they kind of reverse. And, you know, I used to just be trading so actively at 11, like looking at these one minute charts, like, like what was I doing? You know, after, like, like I said, that 15 minute candle is so extended. Um, like the, the probabilities of the trade were just so much, so much lower, but I was so focused on watching the level two and the one minute, the one minute charts. And, and, you know, again, this decision fatigue that what, you know, that's not a good decision. You know, the, the, the best trades I get, you know, like I said, for me, are when those time frames really line up you know, like Apple, like perfect, perfect case, right? Daily, daily stop run reversal with the catalyst and volume, you know, that's the catalyst for a, a multiple percentage, you know, move, right? Yeah. I mean, it's so, uh, it's so odd because how, how many years did you trade it on the one minute? God, way too long. Like, I don't know, 15, like, I, you know, I, I always made efforts to trade on the five minute but I never fully embraced it until like after COVID. 
like 15 years later pretty much basically basically yeah Oof. yeah so it, it, takes... it took me a long time and, it, and 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 it's because it's such a different mentality um it's 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 you know it, it's it's like a big adjustment in my trading right but you get older you your life obligations change like i i didn't want to be a slave to watching the you know the level two in, in every single one minute candle and and constantly being frustrated because i missed that little micro breakout right i wanted to make sure that I had the freedom to be a laptop warrior or go whatever, you know, or trade for my phone, what all these people say, but like not not just do that, but like manage it, right? Like instead of being so worried about like a little wick out on a one minute, just like, all right, I'm look I'm in. I see a 15 minute level pivot. I can put my stop in. I can go do the things I need to do in life. And then I can at least I can monitor it. Right. Like that's 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 the goal. You want to be able to monitor from the road versus like being active from the road. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's kind of funny the way you said it, it made me thought about, uh, Quell Maggie. Um, yeah, it's like, that's, you know, everybody thinks that like, you know, this guy made somewhere, I guess, near or South, like a hundred million in like a few years, like trading and he uses all the higher time frame. He doesn't really care about the one minute or something like that. And he's like the typical definition of a a laptop warrior. He's on his now his yacht or his boat on his like on his laptop. And you're like, how would he like I need all my screens? I need so many things. But he just works with like alerts, stops, and like, you know, as soon as he answers, he just puts a stop and then he just waits. Like I think he he makes money by waiting, which is kind of the opposite. And I'm sure he, you know with the amount of canal he made, he probably pays half of the fees that all of these other people are t- like all of these scalpers are like me are, are, are paying because, you know, so you can execute so many shares in a day on a one minute chart. Like it's, it's unbelievable. And the, the, it's like, it feels like you're playing poker with like such a high rake, like that sometimes, like, even if you're having like a solid week with the lowest commission structure, you can even imagine. And you're like, how, like, how did I pay so much in fee? And it just so many execution that were complete nonsense that they just, you think you have an edge because sometimes of your speed and trading on the one minute, but when you stack everything against you with like fees, decision fatigue and all that, I feel that maybe it's counterproductive actually kind of thinking the more, the more I think about it, the more I'd like to make the switch, but it's, it's such a, a commitment um, that's it, it's it. hard. I mean, and it's hard because when you're used to looking at the, every single movement and trying to incorporate those little movements into your decision making, it's 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 really really it's really hard to do, you know. And, and it's like anything. It's like when we've been talking about you, you've been trying to focus on, you know, trading news, right? Like, it's it's one of those things. If you want to try to make a change, you have to literally shut everything out for two weeks, you know, it's like that, like all those people talk about how it takes, you know, all those like improve self-improvement gurus, they talk about how it takes like, you know, between two weeks and four weeks to create a new habit, right? Like, how are you, how are you going to know unless you get a, enough data? Like what, what is enough data for you to tell you that that's the right or wrong thing for you, right? You know, and too many people do something half-assed, sorry, but you know, they give it a, a half-hearted attempt um, and and say, well, I tried it for three days. I didn't see one setup on the five minute. I didn't take any, tra- I didn't take any trades or, fi- you know, whatever, 15 minutes, whatever you're trying to change and do. This strategy stinks. I'm not going to do it. I need to go back to scalping and, and, and whatever. And, and b- the week hasn't even, the week's not even over yet. Right. And, and maybe, maybe that five minute trade or 15 minute trade happens on Friday. Right. And, and all of a sudden you're scalping it you make back your five minute losses and be like, all right, I'm back to scalping. I did it. I made my 500 bucks or thousand dollars, whatever it is. Whereas if you were trading on that five minute, doing the same thing like that could have been your five or 10 or $20,000 trade, you know, whatever, whatever the numbers are, but the exponentially bigger trade basically. Yeah. I, I think that's kind of what it is. I think I'll, uh, I mean, if you're anything that's intraday, I mean, what I say without news, like not breaking news things, like just, news came out in the morning or pre-market and then I'm trying to look for a setup. I'm confident that I can do the change, but then it's like, okay, 
Like, what are the rules for the one minute? It's like, okay, I'm only going to look at the one minute when it's a breaking news trade. Like, that's just kind of like what it is. Anything else, I will look at setup on a higher time frame because I don't want to be a slave to, to the level two and all that stuff, all of these games. I think that could be a start of implementation. Um, and uh, probably check myself every day or a couple times a day as like, okay, did I follow that rule? Is this a setup on a, on a five minute or was this a setup again on a one minute? Because, you know, it, when you look back at your execution, it really doesn't happen that much, but I look back at my execution and like I executed six trade within the first, like the same, like three minutes. And then you just see the execution arrows on my chart. That's like, <laughs> then I put on a five minute. I'm like, I don't even know what I did. I look yeah. at the five and I'm like, I'm confused. Was I long or short there? Like, like I if I, to, if I, I used I... to do that all the time. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Yep. And then if, I look at you... a 15, even worse. I'm like, <laughs> like what? Like what happened? Like it's so, it's, it's hilarious because at the end of the day, I can know what I did. But if you show me that candle, like a week later, I'm like, who's that idiot? Like who yeah. would, uh, who would trade like this? What a dumbass. And then I would like, people would say, but well, it's you. And I'm like, Ain't no way. <laughs> yeah, no, no way. No way. I only trade on hourly candles, you know? Like, yeah, no way. But, you know, it, it's, I, you know, I hope people appreciate the candidness because, like, you know, no one's, you know, no one's talking about it. No one admits that. You know, Twitter doesn't lose. Everyone on Twitter only makes, right? No one on Twitter makes mistakes like this. No, like, you know, oh, I, I went through the ring with mistakes. I read all the trading books. Like, that's kind of BS. I don't believe it, you know? And, but, that's the reality of like human nature, right? Like we're trying to be involved in everything possible. Um, and as fast as possible where you just don't need, you don't need to be right. You don't need to be right. Just, you know, like Jesse Livermore, like one of his, you know, famous quotes that always gets passed around is, you know, he made money in, in the sitting, like sitting, waiting for the entry and then sitting while he was in the trade. Right. And that's why, you know, and not that there's not seven or eight figure traders, for example, that are one minute day traded, you know, warriors, right? Like they're, they're definitely there, but I feel like the bigger type Koala Maggie or, or like swingy type traders, it's just all time frame, right? You increase your time frame, you increase your odds and your window for a, a bigger move. Right. And, um, you take away that high frequency noise that, you know, that everyone else is over-focused and getting themselves chopped up in, right? I don't know how I ended up on the one minute. Like, I just don't know. Like, it just, that's a question I never had the answer for. I don't even know why. Like, like just people tell you that more information is better, I guess, which is, I don't think it's the case really for most. I don't think people think that that more information is better. Hmm. Well, maybe that's maybe that's what people. Think. I think that people think that they need all of the information, all of the little detailed information, to make the best decision possible, right? And you know, in today's today's technology age, especially you know, like we talked about before, like just with like, or I mentioned that with, with like scrolling, right? Scrolling on Instagram or TikTok or whatever your thing is um it's it's all going to be relative right it's all relative like you can find all those pivots and highs and lows looking at a 60 minute chart but that 60 minute chart can just that can look at the last two months two months worth of data right and you know again it's just people want those people just want that dopamine rush and that dopamine hit like blackjack like you know how many times people go to the casino, right? With a thousand dollars playing hundred dollar hands of blackjack. And they're literally like going to the ATM, like, you know, literally 10 hands later, 10 seconds later, right? Like, all right, I bought a thousand dollars for the casino tonight. And, you know, 10 seconds later, you're out, right? That's, that's exactly what looking at the one minute chart is, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean, I'll, I'll sit on that and I'll think I'll, I'll try to improve a bit and I'll, I'll follow up on it to give you some stats, but I think to give it a good run, I would have to really follow that process for like, a, a, I, I do have data that my trading was better. My frequency was a little lower. I don't know what, I don't know what I think the made important me thing, change again. I think the important thing for you to, to think about is 
not necessarily what your PL is. I think you need to think about um and this, you know, for me, like I realized that a lot of my one minute chart trading was was way more 50-50 than I ever thought it was. But if you're if you're going back to the shorter time frame, that means you think that you're missing some you're missing moves, right? By only looking at the five minute. So I think the important thing for you to track is not the important thing for you to track is really what PL are you missing out on that you think that you're missing out on that you have to go to the shorter time frame? And that's the important question to ask yourself, right? So if I'm making the same, technically I'm not missing on anything. Exactly. It's just yeah. an illusion to yourself. It's it's a, it's an illusion to yourself. It's the story that you're telling yourself that you need to look at the one minute for whatever reason, right? Whatever, whatever subconscious reason. Hmm. All right. Yeah. I'll sit on that. So I think it's going to wrap it up for this one. It's uh, it's good enough. I have enough information to, uh, to at least <laughs> go down another rabbit hole of uh, research, but it's, it's good. Sounds good until next week then. So thanks for watching the full episode. If you're still watching, I really appreciate. And also while you're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know in the comment section what you want to see next. Peace.